ऑफ वुमेन ही रेड टेलर मिल ओरिजिनली पब्लिश्ड इन 1851 जुलाई दिस इज वेस्टमिंस्टर एंड फॉरन क्वार्टरली रिव्यू एटीन जुलाई एटीन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू रीड दिस ऐसे एंड लेट स्टार्ट it is one of the most significant essays of uh, for women empowerment and this is considered to be the most beginning so let's start and it's a very 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 uh, important so let's start uh, most of our readers will probably learn uh, from this passage uh, it is for the first time because actually yesterday i did recording and uh, most of the things i have done so Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, let's start. So I'm starting from here, and I'll go in this way. We can make this more, more better, right? So let's start, and I'm starting from here from the beginning. Okay, so. Uh, there are we we just said significant points i will just hmm. Hmm. okay most of our readers will probably learn from these pages for the first time that there has arisen in the united states and in the most civilized and enlightened portion of them an organized agitation on a new question new not to thinkers not to anyone but by whom the principles of free and popular government are felt as well as acknowledged but new and even unheard of the subject for public meeting and practical political action this question is the enfranchisement of women so we, what is that new question which is arising in united states that is enfranchisement of women and the simple meaning of enfranchisement of women is it's a matter of 1851 my dear and american women are demanding for voting right because they do not have voting right uh so they do not have voting right so enfranchisement of women enfranchisement means simple right to vote what is that enfranchise e n f r a n c h i s e m e n t enfranchisement means right to vote okay in the law and in fact in equality in all rights so they are demanding for the first uh, writing to vote then their admission admission in law and in fact equality in all fields political civil social with equal to male citizen this is the demand of this article and franchisement of women the admission in law and in fact to equality in all rights political civil and social with the male citizens so they are demanding equal rights okay and uh, so it till 1851 uh, in america there is no right for women uh, to vote and they do not have equal rights in uh, civil in uh, judiciary in society and in the community uh, uh, american women are treated unequally in all sphere of life they don't have right to vote they do not have civil rights social right and uh, political rights equal to male citizens male have different rights special rights and women don't have uh, it will add to the surprise with which many uh, will receive this intelligence that the agitation which has been commenced is not a pleading by male writers and orators uh, for women those who are professed professedly to be benefited remaining either indifferent or ostensibly hostile so what is that uh, pleading by male writers are writers for women those who are profess uh, professedly to be benefited remaining either indifferent or uh, ostensible so uh, i mean it was demanded that okay those who are male representative they will talk about women but it never happened and they remained hostile so the now women has to take their own rights it is a political movement practical in its object carried on in in a form which denotes an intention to preserve and it is a movement not merely for women but by them uh, its first public manifestation appeared to have been uh, a conven convention for women this fact also need to be remembered very specifically convention of women held in state of ohio in spring of 1850 of this meeting we have seen no report on 23 and 24th october the last succession of the public meeting it was held in west it was held in 
it was held in uh, Worcester uh, in Massachusetts under the name of a woman right convention so this is uh, the most significant aspect that convention for women Wait. so this is a uh, convention convention of women held in state of ohio in spring of 1850 for this meeting we need uh, we haven't seen any report and on 23 and 24th of october a session of meeting was held in uh, Worcester of Manchester, Massachusetts under name of Women Right Convention. So this convention is very very significant. You remember the year 1850, date 23 and 24th of October, Ta place is uh, Worcester in Massachusetts and the convention is on Women Rights Convention. Uh, officially the president was a woman. Uh, and nearly all the chief speakers also <coughs> women numerously reinforced however by men among uh, whom were some of the most distinguished leaders in the kinder uh, cause of the negro emancipation and, and some men were also there and those men who actually participated in the negro emancipation uh, blacks rights a general and four special committee were nominated for the purpose of carrying on undertaking until the next annual meeting so uh, according to the report in new york tribune now the reporting in the new york tribune says about a thousand persons are present throughout and if a larger place could have been uh, had many thousands would have been attended so this is what the uh, tribune reported new york tribune reported about this convention and i repeat the convention fact about convention 1850 23 24th of october and uh, the rights women uh, women rights convention Worcester in Massachusetts. So this is what the and it is demanding for the franchise enfranchisement of women uh, right to vote and equal rights in civil, political, uh, economic and in all sphere of society. <coughs> the quality of the speaking proceedings bear an advantageous comparison with those of any popular moment with which we are acquainted either in this country or in America. Very rarely in the oratory or public meeting is a part of our BH and declaration so small that of calm, <coughs> good sense and reason so considerable. The result of the convention was in very respect encouraging to those by whom it was summoned and is probably this time in inaugurated one of the most important of women uh, towards political and social reform which are the best characteristics of the present age. So those who organized this meeting it was encouraging because so many thousand people appeared and so many thousand people participated in so this is what very uh, significant and uh, and then what were the resolutions you know what were the resolutions took place because after meeting generally all the resolutions are written so this is what are the issues resolved uh, these are the issues which we need to focus very systematically okay if we mark them like this okay this is two huh. Okay, and this is uh, this is these are the issues resolved. So that every human being of all of full age and re, uh, resident for a proper length of time on the soil of the nation who is required to obey the law is entitled to a voice in its enactment. That very every such person whose property or labor is taxed for the support of the government is entitled to a direct share in such government. Uh, such government. So, any person who is residing here for a length of period of time in a country, they are entitled for the, uh, you know, required obey the law, a voice enactment that very person property labor is taxed for the, and though and those who are paying taxes, they have every right to avail the uh, citizenship and every right of the, um, as a person human being. That women are entitled to the right of suffrage. Uh, suffrage is a uh, right to vote and to be considered eligible to office they uh, can be they will be admitted to all the offices that very party which claim to represent the humanity civilization and the progress of the age is bound to inscribe on its banners equality before the law without distinction of sex so those parties which are <coughs> grand parties in america they will write that 
uh, you know any person who is paying tax and uh, irrespective of their uh, gender their sex they will be eligible for the offices and uh, they will be uh, equal in the humanity civilization and progress of the age so this will be what it is resolved it is resolved that civil and political rights acknowledge no sex and therefore the word male should be struck from very state every state constitution it is all that since the prospects of the honorable and useful employment in after life is the best to mulus to the use of educational advantage since the best education is that we give ourselves in the struggle employment and discipline of life therefore it is impossible that women should make full use of instruction already accorded to them or that their career should uh, do justice to their faculty so uh, they have every right to choose all kind of career and uh, they should be given full fledged freedom and opportunity to uh, enhance their career and their Uh, mind faculties the professional employment are thrown open to them so all kind of professional employment are open to uh, open for women resolve that every effort to educate women without according to them their rights and arousing their uh, conscience by the weight of their responsibility is futile and waste of labor and uh, this is resolve that the law of the property as affecting marriage uh, married person persons a demand and a true revi- uh, revisal so that all right be equally equally between them and wife have during life an equal control over property gained by their uh, mutual toil so a woman because you know till the time what is that a woman can't have property even if she is earning even if she is uh, buying a property but she cannot have on her name so this is the demand of property that uh, you know this is what uh, so that all rights be equally between them the wife have during life equal control over the property gained by her their mutual toil and sacrifice and be uh, and be higher to their husband uh, precisely to extend that he is uh, is higher to her entitled at her death to dispose uh, by will of the same share of the joint property so she has every right to have her own property okay बेटा कहीं जा रहे हो क्या अच्छा अच्छा द फॉलोइंग इज अ ब्रीफ समरी ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल डिमांड सो व्हाट आर द डिमांड्स एंड द फॉलोइंग इज अ ब्रीफ समरी ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल डिमांड एजुकेशन ओके दीज आर द डिमांड्स एंड दीज आर वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट एजुकेशन पार्टनरशिप एंड इक्वल शेयर education primary and higher schools universities medical legal theological institution partnership in the labor and gain risk and remunerations of productivity productive industry and equal share in the formation and administration of law municipal state and national through legislative assemblies courts and executive offices so a woman have she will be inducted in the administrative officer that is municipal state and national legislative assembly and court and executive officers she will be having equal right in primary universities medical legal theological institutions and the labor and gain risk and innovations of productive industry productive in- industry is a manufacturing industry so wherever the industry is there manufacturing productive industry is there she will have equal labor and gains okay she will have equal right to a uh, work there and uh, accumulate the wealth so in this way uh, these are the most significant demands which are uh, demanded by women uh, you need to remember and uh, i you remember this education in primary and higher schools universities medical legal and theological institutions theology is related to religion so even in the religious institutions also she has every right partnership in the labor and gains risk and innovations of productive industry uh, co equal share in legislature state national and assemblies uh, courts executive offices okay so it would be difficult to put so much truth just the reasonable meaning into the style so a little calculate to recommend it state that some of the resolutions but whatever objections may be made in some of the expressions none in our opinion can be made to the demand themselves as a question of justice 
uh, uh, the case seems to us clear for dispute uh, as one of the expediency the more thoroughly it is examined the stronger it will appear the women have a good claim as men have a point personal right to suffrage so women have equal right for the uh, personal rights and suffrage that is voting or a place in a jury box she has every right to be placed in a jury box that is judiciary would be difficult for anyone to deny no one can deny her place in the judiciary it cannot um, it cannot certainly be denied by the united states of america as a people or as a community that democratic institutions rest overtly on the inherent right of everyone to voice in the government the declaration of independence framed by the men who are still their great institutional authorities that occu uh, the documents which has been uh, from the first is now acknowledged basis of their polity commerce with express uh, state express state so uh, the uh, rights are demanded on the basis of political social economical theological uh, theology that is religion religious part is also uh, equally shared by the women we held this truth to be self evident that all men are created equal they are endowed by their creators and certain in uh, alienable rights that among these are life liberty and pursuit of happiness now note this point it is l l p life liberty and pursuit of happiness life l l p that is life liberty in pursuit of happiness life liberty in pursuit of happiness now you remember this okay so uh we do not imagine that any american democrat will evade the force of these expressions by the dishonest or ignorant subterfuge that man in this memorable document does not stand for human being but for one sex only so man is also a human being okay and it's not only one sex so while you talk about man uh, then uh, the woman sex is excluded life liberty in pursuit of happiness so what is this three things life liberty and pursuit of happiness you remember uh, calling it by llp life liberty in pursuit of happiness are in in uh, in alienable rights of the one my, uh, moiety of the human species that the government whose consent is affirmed to be one only source of just power are meant for that half of the mankind only who in relation to other have hitherto assumed the character of, of governors the contradiction between principle and practical uh, and practice can't be explained away a like a like de uh, dereliction of the fundamental maxims of the political creed has been committed by the americans in the uh, fragrant instance for the negroes uh, actually this article is of 21 pages uh, more than 21 pages Uh, so i need to be little fast otherwise it would be too lengthy and too long so that's how i am going faster uh, i like the de uh, dereliction for the fundamental maxims of the political creed uh, has been committed by the americans in flagrant instance of the negroes for this way are learning to recognize the uh, turpitude after a struggle which by um, many of these incident deserve the name of heroic and abolitionists are now so strong in number and influence that they held they hold uh, the balance of parties in united states and this is something very significant and nice that those people who stood for the negro rights their presentation in different parties is much higher which is a matter of celebration it was fitting that the man whose name will remain associated with the Uh, extirpation from the democratic soil of America of the aristocracy of color should be among the originators for America and best of the world, rest of the world. Of the first collective protest against atrocities of sex, a distinction as uh, accidental uh, as the, that of the color, fully by, as irrelevant to all questions of the government. Uh, not only to the democ democracy of America, the claim for women. uh of women to civil and political equality now these are the points which we need to remember 
claim of for women in the civil and political equality okay civil and political equality makes an irresistible appeal but also to the radicals and chartists in the british island democrats on the continent who claim uh, what is called universal suffrage universal suffrage we all know that right to vote okay so uh, uh, universal suffrage as an inherent right uh, unjustly and oppressively withheld uh, from them and if you search it on google you will find lot of documents related to this uh, this meeting convention which took place in 1850 uh, for with that worth of rationality could uh, could suffrage be termed universal while half the human species remain excluded from it to declare that a voice in the government is the right of all demand it all for the parties the part namely to which claim himself belongs is to renounce even the appearance of the principle the chartist to denies the suffrage to women is chartist only because he is not a lord he is one of those levelers who would level only down to themselves so no human being can deny the rights of women even those do not look upon a voice in the government as a matter of personal right nor profess principle which require that it should be extended to all have usually traditional maxim of political justice which is possible to uh, reconcile the exclusion of women from the common rights of citizenship it is an uh, axioms of english freedom that uh, taxation and representation should be coexist extensive even under the laws which give the wife's property to the husband and you see this is strange law that a wife's property given to husband a woman is not entitled she cannot have property this is what the most strange thing is there a woman can't have property even if she is having a property it would be in the name of her husband so man is entitled to property and i think property is one of the most significant thing for empowerment and that's why i like that article written by virginia wolf in uh, 1931 uh, that a room of my own uh, it was written in 1929 and published in 31 so a room of my own i need to have my own property mere hisse ki zameen kahan hai mujhe mere kaam ke badle zameen do so you know a land right to land is something very significant where a woman can save secure herself and uh, that's how the right to property is such a big deal in the in the, all the societies and that's what but it is strange right now we are reading this article written in 1850 in america and there is no right to land for the women and um, even if a woman is having a property it will be in the name of her husband so she is not entitled very strange but these are the laws it is one of the fundamental doctrine of the british constitution that all persons should be tried by their peers yet women whenever uh, whenever tried are tried by the male judge and male jury and then she is raising another question that when a woman is going in a court uh, she is tried by a uh, male judge so there is a biasness and there is no women judge do uh, foreign the law accord the privilege of claiming that half the jury should be composed of themselves and if if there is any dispute which has arise out of uh, uh if a, if a person from the foreign origin uh and the dispute has uh, come uh, related to that person in the court then it is demanded that uh half the jury must be from the the foreign land you know the from the country where the person belongs to but women half of the population of the world is there and they do not have any judge in the court so that is why the biasness is there and that's why she is demanding representation in the judiciary apart from maxims of detail which present local and national rather than universal idea it is an acknowledged di- uh, dictate for justice to make no regarding distinction without necessary in all things the presumption ought to be on the side of equality a, a reason must be given why anything should be permitted to one person and interdicted to another so why one person or male only to be given all the rights 
but when that which is interdicted include nearly everything which who those to whom it is permitted most prize and to be deprived of which they feel to be most insulting when not only political liberty but personal freedom of action is the prerogative of the caste uh, when even in the exercise of industry almost all employments which are the higher faculties in an important field which led to distinction riches or even pecuniary independence are forced round on exclusive domain of predominant sections scarcely any door left being to the uh, <coughs> dependent class except such at, as all who can enter elsewhere are disdainfully pass by the miserable expediency which are advanced as excuse for so uh, grossly So today we are going to study one of the most significant article written by uh, Harriet Taylor Mill and it was originally published anonymously in Westminster and Foreign Quarterly Review July 1851 in LSS Rossi edited essay on sex equality 1970 and this is the picture which you could see uh, Harriet Taylor Mill enfranchisement of women. This is one of the most significant article we are going to study today and if we are able to read and understand it which is actually the language of the article is so simple and I don't find any uh, difficulty for understanding this. So let's proceed. Uh, let's move. And the article which we are starting right now, Enfranchisement of Women, written by Harriet Taylor Mill. Uh, most of our readers will probably learn from these pages for the first time that there has been arisen in the United States and in the most civilized and enlightened portion of them an organized agitation on a new question, new, not to thinkers, not to any one by whom the principle of free and popular government are felt as well as acknowledged, but new and even unheard of the subject for public meeting and practical political question. So this is a new subject and what is that new? Uh, new which is never heard uh, I mean till the time people haven't heard it this question is the enfranchisement of women and what is the question the question is enfranchisement of women uh, and that is the meaning of this enfranchisement means enfranchisement of women means right to vote women have right to vote so uh, their admission in law and uh, this is a very significant line Do you have to remember these lines what is that the question is enfranchisement of women, their admission in law and in fact to equality in all rights, political, civil and social with the male citizens of the community. I repeat the statement, the question is the enfranchisement of women, their admission in law and in fact to equality in all rights, political, civil and social with the male citizens of the country. This is a question, this is a demand from the women, they want equal rights. It will be, uh, it will add to the surprise with which many will receive this intelligence that the agitation which has commenced is not a reading by the male writers and orators for women. Those who are professedly to be benefited remaining either indifferent or ostensibly hostile. It is a political movement practical in its object carried on in, in a form which denote an intention to preserve and it is a movement not merely for women but by them. For the, its first public manifestation appeared to have been a convention for women held and the other information first of all the demand and the second is it is a convention of women held on state of Ohio in the spring of 1850 of this meeting we have seen no report on 23 and 24th of the October last the uh, succession of the public meeting was held Worcester in Massachusetts under the name of Women's Right Convention. So newspaper didn't publish it as same, uh, you know, the biased media anywhere in the world. They do not publish significant events. So first is enfranchisement of women, civil, political, economic rights and equal share uh, with the male counterpart. And the convention held on that the title of the convention is Women's Right Convention. It ha happened in 1850, 1850 and uh, 23 and 24th of October. The place is Worcester in Massachusetts. 
and thousands of hundreds and thousands of women gathered there but media as usual didn't report and new york new york time new york time tribune writes that uh, there were so many uh, people you know crowd willingly uh, it was uh, there and if the place would have been more uh, there would have been more people so the the place was actually small and they could not accommodate many people uh, so the quality of the speaking the proceedings bear an advantage in comparison with those of any popular movement with which we are acquired acquainted either in this country or in america very rarely in the auditory or public meeting is the part of verbiage and uh, declamation so small that of calm uh, good sense and reason so considerable the result for the convention was in every aspect encouraging to those by whom it was summoned it uh, is probably destined in uh, to inaugurate one of the most pop- important of the moment towards political and social reform which are best characterized at the of present time so uh, this is the political and social reform women wanted political and social reform in the country to get equal rights equal share with their male counterpart that the promoters of this new agitation take their stand on principle and do not fear to declare these in uh, their widest extent without time serving or compromise will be seen from the resolution adopted by the convention part of which we resolve so what are the conventions what are the uh, resolutions taken place okay these are uh, significant things we need to understand what are the resolutions taken place and uh, i read it is resolved that every human being full age and resident for a proper length of time on the toil of uh, the nation who is required to obey the law hmm. who is required to obey the law is entitled to voice of its enactment that if that every such person whose property or labor is taxed for the support of the government is entitled to direct share in the government so what is a a, a person who is a uh, staying for a length in the country a uh, citizen of the country and they are tax payers and because of that taxes the government is running uh, the money is required to the government is being given by the public then they have a direct share or a representation in the government this is what we are talking resolve that women are entitled to the right of suffrage suffrage we all know as uwfrg right to vote and to be considered eligible to office and at every party which claim to represent the humanity civilization and progress of the age is bound to incredible in its banners equally before the law with distinction of the sex or color okay so uh, it is resolved that the civil and political rights acknowledge no sex so when we are talk about civil and political rights they don't have any sex it's a human being every human being must have civil and political rights and uh, the male word okay the male word from the constitution must be struck out it should be instead of male it should be person so the male word must be struck out the male word must be struck out and uh, because male represent only male but we need to go for a person so this must be struck out okay so what is that this must be struck out and this male word must be this male word must be struck out yes should be struck from every state of constitution and it is resolved that since the prospects of honorable and useful employment in after life is the best stimulus to the use of educational advantage and since the best education is that we give ourselves in the struggle employment and discipline of life uh, discipline of life therefore it is impossible for women should make full use of instruction already accorded to them or their career should do justice to their faculties until the avenues to the various civil and professional employment are thrown open to them
வந்து சரி சிக்கனும் கிருஷ்ணன் Resolve that, uh, resolve that every effort to educate women without according to them their rights and arousing their conscience by the weight of their responsibilities is futile and a waste of labor. Resolve that uh, the law of property, law of property and affecting marriage persons demand a thorough revisal so that all rights be equal. between them and the wife have during life equal control over their property gained by their mutual toil and sacrifice and uh, be higher to the husband precisely to that that he is a higher to her and entitled at death of disposed by will of the sum share of the joint property as he is the following is the brief summary so what is this brief summary and these are significant points which you need to remember so there are till the time we have considered actually three points and i take back to you first is now just see this is first is uh, what is that the uh, this is what the equal rights in law equality in all rights political civil and social so this is the one significant point okay this this is one significant point here we are moving and then for this achieving these rights the convention took place so this is the second point which we need to remember that where the convention took place and what was the uh, purpose of this and which place and what time and this is what so women rights convention 1850 23 and 24th of october and the place is worcester massachusetts okay this second then uh, the third is uh, we are going towards the social and political reform in the country okay so uh, this is also significant then what are the when the convention took place there are always resolutions taking place so what are the resolutions that political uh, first of all anybody who is paying the tax must be given representation in the government women have equal right and equal they are the represent the humanity and civilization so uh, that's what uh, we need to remember the male word from the constitution must be struck down and it is resolved that since the prospect of honorable and useful employment in after life is the best stimulus to the use of educational advantage since the last education that what we give result so struggle employment and discipline of life therefore it is impossible for women should make full use of instruction already according to them and their career should uh, do justice to their faculty so women must be given equal right and opportunity to uh, develop their faculties and to get justice that every effort to educate women without according to them right arousing their conscience by the weight of their responsibility is futile and waste of labor so women must be educated and uh, make responsible for the upliftment of the of their own according to their own wish and desire okay so their labor must not be waste resolve that the law of property as affecting marriage demand a thorough uh, uh, revisal so that all right be equally Uh, between them the wife have during life equal control over the property gained by their mutual toil and sacrifice and higher to her husband precisely to that extent he is higher to her the following is the brief summary what is that education uh, in primary and high school universities medical legal theological institutions she must be given education from the beginning to the end the school level uh, primary level high school university medical legal and theological the- theology is a religious uh, education partnership in the labor and gains risk and remunerations and productive productive industry productive industries manufacturing industry equal share in the formation and administration of law mun- municipal state and national through legislative assembly court executive so women must be and these are the very significant point my dear friends you please remember these first of all education at all level primary high school university medical theological institution partnership in all uh, productive uh, units productive industry there she can uh, upgrade her skill and she can get uh, remuneration for that and equal share in the uh, state politics uh, national politics legislative assembly uh, parliament 
and the court executive offices everywhere so these are significant points and uh, then we move forward okay then we move forward it would be difficult to put so much trust and reasonable meaning to into the style so little calculated to recommend it that uh, some of the resolutions but whatever objection may be made to some of the expressions none in our opinion can be made to the demand themselves as a question of justice the case seems us to clear for dispute as one of the expediency and more thoroughly it is examined the stronger it will appear that women have as good claim as men in every personal right and suffrage okay this is what a very significant point that women and men have equal right in uh, right to vote right to property right to live with dignity right uh, for employment and every everything everything okay so place in jury box would be difficult uh, for anyone to deny and they cannot be denied place in jury box here uh, harriet says very significant point that when because most of the time right now what the circumstances in america is there that most of the time judges are male so the biasness toward judgment is always there and that's why she is giving an example where that a, that when a foreigner is tried in the any other country the representation of his community and his country the judge is uh, mandatory so for that matter uh, women when they are uh, tried in the court women judges are required and that's how the representation is required and that's how when we talk about reservation dr ambedkar also talks about uh, reservation means representation so uh, that's how uh, uh, we hold this truth to be self evident that all men are created equal and they endow their creator and certain uh, in alienable rights so all people are equal man women are equal so it's a life liberty and pursuit of happiness this is what i found very significant that life liberty and pursuit of happiness women have every right for the happiness so if we can uh, do this you know the this is what uh, this uh, other way to write down let me just do it uh, okay so here we can write it down this is here and these are significant points which i would like to add here you know what okay this is uh, so this is what life liberty and pursuit of happiness right so if i copy it and then i paste it here this will give you good sense right color we can change as a red so you can see it more and that's how this is what okay like that blue color also looks very impressive right so uh life liberty and pursuit of happiness right life liberty and pursuit of happiness this is what the uh, main point significant point we are trying to understand here life liberty and pursuit of happiness okay okay then we do not imagine that any american democrat will evade the force of the expression and dishonest and ignorant uh, subterfuge in the memorable document does not stand for human being but for one sex only life liberty and pursuit of happiness are in alienable rights only one moiety of the human species that govern whose consent is affirmed to the only source of just a uh, power are meant for that half of the mankind only in relation to the other have either to assume the character of governance the contradiction between principle and practice can't be explained away like declaration of fundamental maxims of their political career has been committed by uh okay committed by the americans in the flagrant instance of the negroes at uh, this they are learning to recognize the ter attitude after the struggle which by a uh, many of this incident deserve the name of the heroic and abolitionist are uh, now so strong in number and in the influence that they hold the 
blame of parties in the United States. It was fitting that the man whose name will remain associated with the exter, uh, extirpation from the democratic soil of America of the aristocratic color should be among the originator for the America and for the rest of the world. Uh, of the first collective protest against the atrocities of the sex, a distinction as accidental as of the color, uh, fully as irrelevant to all questions of the government. Not only to the democracy of America, the claim of women to civil and political equality makes an irresistible appeal, but also to those radicals and chartists in the British island and Democrats on the continent who claim that what is called universal suffrage as an inherent right uh, unjustly and oppressively withheld from them. So, universal suffrage is an inherent right. You know, it comes automatically the way the moment you are born as a human being and uh, the, the all the rights of that particular country are you are entitled to enjoy that for with what truth or rationality could the suffrage be termed universal uh, while half the human species remain excluded from it so what is the use of that uh, you know uh, right to vote when half of the population is out of that their rights their their needs are not heard in the constitution so there is no use of such constitution where half the population is out of that. Okay, uh, so the Chartist who denies the suffrage of women to the, uh, the Chartist only because uh, he is not a lord. He is one of those levelers who would level only down to themselves. Even those who do not look upon the voice in the government as a matter uh, of personal right nor pro profess principle uh, which require it should be extended to all have usually traditional maximum political justice which is impossible to reconcile the exclusion of women from the common right of citizenship it is an ex axiom of english freedom that ex taxation and representation should be coextensive even under the laws which give the wife's property to the husband there are many unmarried women who pay taxes it is one of the fundamental and you remember this point you know the wife's property to the husband you know a woman cannot have a property on her own. So, uh, right now the scenario is different. But uh, during this time, we are. this is the article written in 1850. So, woman cannot have right to property. So, even if her property is there, it will be in the name of her husband or son or father. So, this is something uh, very difficult to digest. Doctrine of the British constitution that all persons should be uh, tried by their peers. Yet, women whatever uh, tried are tried by male judge as a male jury and that's what the male judge and male jury it creates a biasness that's what the representation of women judge and women jury is required and then here she is giving the uh, example that if any foreigner is there then the representation of that uh, community and country is uh, uh, necessary in the judiciary and that's how we need demand for the a woman also so woman judge woman jury woman representation in the court etc and that's how the we can bring the justice system equal so flagrant uh, injustice while far from being expedient we firmly convinced that the division of the mankind into two castes one born as ruler and other rule so there, there are two castes you know caste is very prominent in India and uh, this caste is means there is a birth based uh, uh, i mean uh, birth based division uh, in which particular caste your name is being given on the basis of your parents caste when you are born in that particular uh, community caste you will uh, throughout your life you will be entitled to that caste there is no escape from the caste you cannot leave your caste you cannot uh, convert your caste okay there is no option uh, for getting away from the caste even if you marry to a different caste even if you convert whatever but the caste will remain the caste so that's why people say jati hai ki jati hi nahi right uh, so that's how uh, this is what very significant and unqualified mischief a source of uh, perversion and demoralization both to favored class and to those uh, at whose expense they are favored 
reducing none of the good which is in the custom to ascribe it, a forming a bar almost uh, insuperable while it lasts to any any uh, rely vital Im improvement either in the character or in the social condition of human race. Okay, uh, these propositions it is now our purpose to maintain, but before entering in them, we would endure to dispel the preliminary objection which in mind persons to whom the subject is new are apt to prevent a real consent, consentious examination uh, of it. The chief of these obstacles is that most formidable one, custom. Women never have had equal rights with them. The claim of this, their half of the common right of the mankind is looked upon as bad by universal practice. The strongest of the prejudice, the prejudice against what is new and unknown has indeed in an age of change like the present lost much of its force. If it uh, had not there would be a uh, little hope for prevailing against over three months of the three-fourths of the habitable world even at this day the answer it has always been so close for discussion but it is the boast of modern european and of their american kind that they know and do many things which their uh, forefathers neither knew nor did and it is perhaps the most unquestionable point of superiority in the present above former and habit is now uh, the tyrant, it firmly was over opinion and modes of action and worship of custom is a uh, declining idolatry and uncustomary right on a subject which judges the greater interest of life, still startled when first present, but if can be kept before the mind until the impression of the strangeness wears, it obtained a hearing and rational consideration as interlocked of your custom to bestow on any other subject. In present case, the prejudice of custom is doubtless on the uh, unjust side. Great thinkers, indeed, at different times, from the Plato to Condorcet, besides some of the most eminent names of the present age, have made emphatic protests in favor of equality of women. And there have been voluntary so societies, religion or secular, which the society of the friend is most known, uh, by whom the principle was uh, recognized. But there has uh, been a no political community or nation in which by law the uses women have not been in the state of political and civil inferiority. In the ancient uh, world, the same fact has, was alleged and the equal truth in behalf of slavery. It might have been alleged in favor of the mitigated form of slavery served them all through the Middle Ages. It was urged against freedom of industry, freedom of conscience, freedom of press. None of these liberties were uh, thought compatible with well or well-ordered state until they have proved their possibility by actually existing as fact. That the institution or practice is a customary is not presumption of its goodness. When any other sufficient cause can be assigned for its existence, there is no difficulty in understanding why the subjection of women has been a custom. No other explanation is indeed than physical force. So the question is, why the subjection of women has been a custom. I mean, how could you say that controlling one person by the other is a custom and it is a social custom and it is a society and it is related to culture, everything. So this is wrong. That those who were physically weaker should have been made legally inferior is quite uh, comfortable to the mode of which the world has been governed. Until very lately, the rule of physical strength was general law of human affair. Throughout history, the nation raised class, which found themselves as strongest either in muscle, in rich, or in military discipline, have conquered and held in subjection the uh, rest. Even if, uh, if even in the most improved nations, the law of the sword is a lost this uh, countenance as unworthy. So, a law of the sword. And what is saying that? Uh, when the uh, initially the 18th century, somewhere she's talking about 18th century, war and conquest, okay, have been only since the since democratic revolution began. The world is very young and it has just begun to cast its of injustice. It is only now getting rid of Negro slavery. It is only now getting rid of monarchical deportism and I hope it will get rid of caste system in India also. So Negro slavery which has been a blot on the humanity, people are trying to get away out of this. Monarchical despotism is replaced with the 
democracy and getting rid, rid of hereditary feudal nobility so some people who are born as a noble and they inherit a lot of property uh, is also uh, abolishing now it is only now getting rid of disabilities on the ground of religion so if someone you know belong to particular religion they will be having a disability it is only beginning to treat uh, any man as a citizen except the rich and favored portion of the middle class can we wonder that it has not yet done as much for women a society was constituted until the last few generations in equality was its very basis associations ground on equal rights sincerely existed to be uh, to be equal was be enemies a uh, two persons could hardly cooperate in anything or meet in uh, any amicable relation without the law appointing that one of them should be the superior of the other mankind have outgrown this state and all things now tend to substitute as a general public of human relation as equality instead of the dominion of the strongest but of all relations that between the uh, between men So today we are going to study one of the most significant article written by uh, Harriet Taylor Mill, and it was originally published anonymously in Westminster and Foreign Quarterly Review, July eighteen fifty one, in Alice S. Rossi edited essay on sex equality, nineteen seventy, and this is the picture which you could see: uh, Harriet Taylor Mill enfranchisement of women. this is one of the most significant article we are going to study today and if we are able to read and understand it which is actually the language of the article is so simple and i don't find any uh, difficulty for understanding this so let's proceed uh, let's move and the article which we are starting right now enfranchisement of women written by harriet taylor mill Uh, most of our readers will probably learn from these pages for the first time that there has been a rise in the United States and in the most civilized and enlightened portion of them an organized agitation on a new question new not to thinkers not to any one by whom the principle of free and popular government are felt as well as acknowledged but new and even unheard of the subject for public meeting and practical political question so this is a new subject and what is that new uh new which is never heard uh, i mean till the time people haven't heard it this question is the enfranchisement of women and what is the question the question is enfranchisement of women uh and that is the meaning of this enfranchisement means enfranchisement of women means right to vote women have right to vote so uh their admission in law and uh, this is a very significant line you have to remember these lines what is that the question is enfranchisement of women their admission in law and in fact to equality in all rights political civil and social with the male citizens of the community i repeat the statement the question is the enfranchisement of women their admission in law and in fact to equality in all rights political civil and social with the male citizens of the country this is a question this is a demand from the women they want equal rights it will be uh, it will add to the surprise with which many will receive this intelligence that the agitation which has commenced is not a reading by the male writers and orators for women those who are professedly to be benefited remaining either indifferent or ostensibly hostile it is a political movement practical in its object carried on in in a form which denotes an intention to preserve and it is a movement not merely for women but by them for the its first public manifestation appeared to have been a convention for women held and the other information first of all the demand and the second is it is a convention of women held on state of ohio in the spring of 1850 of this meeting we have seen no report on 23 and 24th of the october last the uh, succession of the public meeting was held Worcester in Massachusetts under the name of Women's Right Convention. So newspaper didn't publish it as same uh, you know the biased media anywhere in the world. They do not publish significant events. 
so first is enfranchisement of women civil political economic rights and equal share uh, with the male counterpart and the convention held on that the title of the convention is women's right convention it ha- happened in 1850 1850 and uh, 23 and 24th of october the place is worcester in massachusetts and thousands of hundreds and thousands of women gathered there but media as usual didn't report a new york times new york times tribune writes that uh, there were so many uh, people you know crowd willingly uh, it was uh, there and if the place would have been more uh, there would have been more people so the the place was actually small and they could not accommodate many people uh, so the quality of the speaking the proceedings be an advantageous comparison with those of any popular movement with which we are acquired acquainted either in this country or in america very rarely in the oratory or public meeting is the part of verbiage and uh, declamation so small that of calm uh, good sense and reason so considerable the result for the convention was in every aspect encouraging to those by whom it was summoned it uh, is probably destined in uh, to inaugurate one of the most pop- important of the moment towards political and social reform which are best characterized at the of present time so uh, this is the political and social reform women wanted political and social reform in the country to get equal rights equal share with their male counterpart that the promoters of this new agitation take their stand on principle and do not fear to declare these in uh, their widest extent without time serving or compromise will be seen from the resolution adopted by the convention part of which we resolve so what are the conventions what are the uh, resolutions taken place okay these are uh, significant things we need to understand what are the resolutions taken place and uh, i read it is resolved that every human being full age and resident for a proper length of time on the toil of uh, the nation who is required to obey the law hmm. who is required to obey the law is entitled to voice of its enactment that if that every such person whose property or labor is taxed for the support of the government is entitled to direct share in the government so what is a a, a person who is a uh, staying for a length in the country a uh, citizen of the country and they are tax payers and because of that taxes the government is running uh, the money is required to the government is being given by the public then they have a direct share or a representation in the government this is what we are talking resolve that women are entitled to the right of suffrage suffrage we all know as uwfrag right to vote and to be considered eligible to office and at every party which claim to represent the humanity civilization and progress of the age is bound to incredible in its banner equally before the law with distinction of the sex or color okay so uh, it is resolved that the civil and political rights acknowledge no sex so when we are talk about civil and political rights they don't have any sex it's a human being every human being must have civil and political rights and uh, the male word okay the male word from the constitution must be struck out it should be instead of male it should be person so the male word must be struck out the male word must be struck out and uh, because male represent only male but we need to go for a person so this must be struck out okay so what is that this must be struck out and this male word must be this male word must be struck out yes should be struck from every state of constitution and it is resolved that since the prospects of honorable and useful employment in after life is the best stimulus to the use of educational advantage and since the best education is that we give ourselves in the struggle employment and discipline of life uh discipline of life therefore it is impossible for women should make full 
use of instruction already accorded to them or their career should do justice to their faculties until the avenues to the various civil and professional employment are thrown open to them. Resolve that, uh, resolve that every effort to educate women without according to them their rights and arousing their concerns by the weight of their responsibilities is futile and a waste of labor. Resolve that uh, the law of property. Law property and affecting marriage persons demand a thorough revisal so that all rights be equal between them and the wife have during life equal control over their property gained by their mutual toil and sacrifice and uh, be higher to the husband precisely to that that he is a higher to her and entitled at death of disposed by will of the some share of the joint property as he is. The following is the brief summary. So what is this brief summary? And these are significant points which you need to remember. So there are till the time we have considered actually three points. And I take back to you. First is, now just see. This is first is, uh, what is that? The, uh, this is what the equal rights in law, equality in all rights, political, civil and social. So this is the one significant point, okay. This, this is one significant point here, we are moving and then for this achieving these rights, the convention took place. So this is the second point which we need to remember that where the convention took place and what was the uh, purpose of this and which place and what time and this is what. So Women Rights Convention 1850, 23 and 24th of October and the place is Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, this second. then. Uh, the third is uh, we are going towards the social and political reform in the country. Okay, so uh, this is also significant. Then what are the, when the convention took place, there are always resolutions taking place. So what are the resolutions that political, uh, first of all, anybody who is paying the tax must be given representation in the government. Women have equal right and equal. They are the, represent the humanity and civilization. So, uh, that's what uh, we need to remember. The male word from the constitution must be struck down and it is resolved that since the prospect of honorable and useful employment in afterlife is the best stimulus to the use of educational advantage, since the last education that what we give result, so struggle, employment and discipline of life. Therefore, it is impossible for women should make full use of instruction already according to them and their career should uh, do justice to their faculty. So, Women must be given equal right and opportunity to uh, develop their faculties and to get justice. That every effort to educate women without according to them right, arousing their concerns by the weight of their responsibilities to die in waste of labor. So women must be educated and uh, make responsible for the upliftment of, the, of their own, according to their own wish and desire. Okay, so their labor must not be waste. Resolve that the law of property as affecting marriage demand a thorough uh, re uh, revisal so that all rights be equally uh, between them. The wife have during life equal control over the property gained by the mutual toil and sacrifice and hire to her husband precisely to that extent he is higher to her. The following is the brief summary. What is that? Education. Uh, in primary and high school universities, medical, legal, theological institutions. She must be given education from the beginning to the end. The school level, primary level, high school, 
university medical legal and theological the- theology is a religious uh, education partnership in the labor and gains risk and remunerations and productive productive industry productive industries manufacturing industry equal share in the formation and administration of law mun- municipal state and national through legislative assemblies court executive so women must be and these are the very significant point my dear friends you please remember these first of all education at all level primary high school university medical theological institution partnership in all uh, productive uh, units productive industry there she can uh, upgrade her skill and she can get uh, remuneration for that and equal share in the uh, state politics uh, national politics legislative assembly uh, parliament and court executive offices everywhere so these are significant points and uh, then we move forward okay then we move forward it would be difficult to put so much trust and reasonable meaning to into the style so little calculated to recommend it that uh some of the resolutions but whatever objection may be made to some of the expressions none in our opinion can be made to the demand themselves as a question of justice the case seems as to clear for dispute as one of the expediency and more thoroughly it is examined the stronger it will appear that women have as good claim as men in every personal right and suffrage okay this is what a very significant point that women and men have equal right in uh right to vote right to property right to live with dignity right uh, for employment and every everything everything okay so place in jury box would be difficult uh, for anyone to deny and they cannot be denied place in jury box here uh harriet says very significant point that when because most of the time right now what the circumstances in america is there that most of the time judges are male so the biasness toward judgment is always there and that's why she is giving an example where that a, that when a foreigner is tried in the any other country the representation of his community and his country the judge is uh, mandatory so for that matter uh, women when they are uh, tried in the court women judges are required and that's how the representation is required and that's how when we talk about reservation dr ambedkar also talks about a uh, reservation means representation so uh, that's how uh, uh, we hold this truth to be self evident that all men are created equal and they endowed their creator in certain uh, in alienable rights so all people are equal men women are equal so it's a life liberty and pursuit of happiness this is what i found very significant that life liberty and pursuit of happiness women have every right for the happiness so if we can uh, do this you know the this is what uh, this uh, other way to write down let me just do it uh, okay so here we can write it down this is here and these are significant points which i would like to add here you know what okay this is uh, so this is what life liberty and pursuit of happiness right so if i copy it and then i paste it here this will give you good sense right color we can change as a red so you can see it more and that's all this is what okay i put blue color which so looks very impressive right so uh life liberty and pursuit of happiness right life liberty and pursuit of happiness this is what the uh, main point significant point we are trying to understand here life liberty and pursuit of happiness okay okay then we do not imagine that any american democrat will evade the force of the expression and dishonest and ignorant uh, subterfuge in the memorable document does not stand for human being but for one sex only life liberty and pursuit of happiness are in alienable rights only one moiety of the human species that govern whose consent is affirmed to the only source of just a uh, power are meant for that half of the mankind only 
a relation to the other have either to assume the character of governance the contradiction between principle and practical can't be explained away like declaration of fundamental maxims of their political career has been committed by uh committed by the americans in the flagrant instance of the negroes uh, this they are learning to recognize the turpitude after the struggle which by uh, many of these incident deserve the name of the heroic and abolitionist are uh, now so strong in number and in the influence that they hold the blame of parties in the united states it was fitting that the man whose name will remain associated with the exter uh, extirpation from the democratic soil of america of the aristocratic color should be among the originator for the american for the rest of the world uh, of the first collective protest against the atrocities of the sex a distinction as accidental as of the color uh, fully as irrelevant to all questions of the government not only to the democracy of america the claim of women to civil and political equality makes an irresistible appeal but also to those radicals and chartists in the british island and democrats on the continent who claim that what is called universal suffrage as an inherent right uh, unjustly and oppressively withheld from them so universal suffrage is a inherent right you know it comes automatically the way the moment you are born as a human being and uh, the, the all the rights of that particular country are you are entitled to enjoy that for with what truth or rationality could the suffrage be termed universal a while half the human species remain excluded from it so what is the use of that uh, you know uh, right to vote when half of the population is out of that their rights their their needs are not heard in the constitution so there is no use of such constitution where half the population is out of that okay uh, so the chartist should deny the suffrage of women to the uh, the chartist only because uh he is not a lord he is one of those levelers who would level only down to themselves even those who do not look upon the voice in the government as a matter uh, of person right nor pro profess principle uh, which require it should be extended to all have usually traditional maxim of political justice which is impossible to reconcile the exclusion of women from the common right of citizenship it is an ex- axiom of english freedom that ex- taxation and representation should be coextensive even under the laws which give the wife's property to the husband there are many unmarried women who pay taxes it is one of the fundamental and you remember this point you know the wife's property to the husband you know a woman cannot have a property on her own so uh, right now the scenario is different but uh, during this time we are this is the article written in 1850 so woman cannot have right to property so even if her property is there it will be in the name of her husband or son or father so this is something uh, very difficult to digest the doctrine of the british constitution that all persons should be uh, tried by their peers yet women whatever uh, tried are tried by male judge as a male jury and that's what the male judge and male jury it creates a bias that's what the representation of women judge and women jury is required and then here she is giving the uh, example that if any foreigner is there then the representation of that uh, community and country is uh, uh, necessary in the judiciary and that's how we need demand for the a uh, woman also so women judge women jury women representation in the court etc and that's how the we can bring the justice system equal so flagrant uh injustice while far from being expedient we firmly convince that the division of the mankind into two castes one born as ruler and other ruled so there there are two caste you know caste is very prominent in india and uh, this caste is means there is a birth based uh, uh, i mean uh, birth based division uh, in which particular caste your name is being given on the basis of your parents caste when you are born in that particular uh, 
community caste you will throughout your life you will be entitled to that caste there is no escape from the caste you cannot leave your caste you cannot uh, convert your caste okay there is no option uh, for getting away from the caste even if you marry to a different caste even if you convert whatever but the caste will remain the caste so that's why people say jati hai ki jati hi nahi right uh, so that's how uh, this is what very significant and unqualified mischief a source of uh, perversion and demoralization both to favored class and to those uh, at whose expense they are favored producing none of the good which is in the custom to ascribe it a forming a bar almost uh, insuperable while it lasts to any re- any uh, rely vital Im- improvement either in the character or in the social condition of human beings okay uh, these propositions it is now our purpose to maintain but before entering in them we would endure to dispel the preliminary objection which in mind persons to whom the subject is new are apt to prevent a real consent consentious examination uh, of it the chief of these obstacle is that most formidable one custom women never have had equal rights with them the claim of this their half of the common right of the mankind is looked upon as bad by universal practice the strongest of the prejudice the prejudice against what is new and unknown has indeed in an age of change like the present lost much of its force if it uh, had not there would be a uh, little hope for prevailing against over 3 months of the 3 fourth of the habitable world even at this day the answer it has always been so close all discussion but it is the most of modern european and of their american kind that they know and do many things which their uh, forefathers neither knew nor did and it is perhaps the most unquestionable point of superiority in the present above former and habit is now Uh, the tyrant it firmly was over opinion and modes of action and worship of custom is a uh, declining idolatry and uncustomary right on a subject which judges the greater interest of life still startle when first present but if can be kept before the mind until the impression of the strange days wears it obtain a hearing and rational consideration as interlocked of your custom to bestow on any other subject in present case the prejudice of custom is doubtless on the uh, unjust side great thinkers indeed at different times from the plato to condorcet besides some of the most eminent names of the present age have made emphatic protest in favor of equality of women and there have been voluntary so societies religion or secular which the society of the friend is most known uh, by whom the principle was uh, recognized but there has uh, been a no political community or nation in which by law the uses women have not been in the state of political and civil inferiority in the ancient uh, world the same fact has was alleged and the equal truth in behalf of slavery it might have been alleged in favor of the mitigated form of slavery served them all through the middle ages it was urged against freedom of industry freedom of conscience freedom of press none of these liberties were uh, thought compatible with the well or well ordered state until they have proved their possibility by actually existing as fact that the institution or practice is a customary is not presumption of its goodness when any other sufficient cause can be assigned for its existence there is no difficulty in understanding why the subjection of women has been a custom no other explanation is indeed than physical force so the question is why the subjection of women has been a custom i mean how could you say that controlling one person by the other is a custom and it is a social custom and it is a society and it is related to culture everything so this is wrong that those who were physically weaker should have been made legally inferior is quite uh, comfortable to the mode of which the world has been governed until very lately the rule of physical strength was general law of human affair throughout history the nation race class which found themselves as strongest either in muscle in rich or in military discipline have conquered and held in subjection the uh, rest 
even if uh, if even in the most improved nations the law of the sword is the last this uh, countenance as unworthy so a law of the sword and what is saying that uh, when the uh, initially the 18th century somewhere is talking about 18th century war and conquest okay have been only since the since democratic revolution began the world is very young and it has just begun to cast its of injustice it is only now getting rid of negro slavery it is only now getting rid of monarchical despotism and i hope it will get rid of caste system in india also so negro slavery which has been a blot on the humanity people are trying to get away out of this monarchical despotism is replaced with the democracy and getting rid, rid of hereditary feudal nobility so some people who are born as a noble and they inherit lot of property uh, is also uh, abolishing now it is only now getting rid of disabilities on the ground of religion so if someone you know belong to particular religion they will be having a uh, disability it is only beginning to treat uh, any man as a citizen except the rich and favored portion of the middle class can we wonder that it has not yet done as much for women a society was constituted until the last few generations inequality was its very basis associations ground on equal rights sincerely existed to be uh to be equal was be enemies a uh, two persons could hardly cooperate in anything or meet in uh, any amicable relation without the law appointing that one of them should be the superior of the other mankind have out grown this state and all things now tend to substitute as a general public of human relation as equality instead of the dominion of the strongest but of all relations that between the uh, between men okay Uh, stop. 